Now, I mentioned the pre-Hispanic, but also folk art is still very alive in Mexico, and this is an example of the Huichol uh, Indian art. They're up in the state of Jalisco, up by Guadalajara, and we actually brought Huichol Indians into the museum in Mexico City, and um, that's one of them working. Now, they, they made this art by uh, covering a board with beeswax and then pressing colored wool into it. And what, what, what I did, I had a, uh, well, I had the 68 screen on a piece of wood and then had them do what they wanted from that point on. And uh, it was really interesting. And, you know, we learned a lot from folk art as far as color combinations and the way color was used in Mexico. And this was very helpful for us because we were able to, um, you know, use a lot of color and had a lot of time or a lot of uh, resource to experiment from. And of course, this was very helpful. Color, of course, is Mexico also. So we had the look of Mexico built into the, uh, the form and we tried to be as colorful as we possibly could. Now you can see in the beginning, in the, in the uh, foreground, we had a, a weekly publication that was color-coded. We had monthly publications. We had a lot of publications. We had a lot of color um, used for the publications. And I radiated, I mean, thank goodness for the radiation, uh, you know, tool, because I used that to tie things into the program that were very, you know, quite removed from the program. So from postage stamps, in postage stamps, I was able to make different themes relate to the Olympics. And of course, when you get into the large um, application, the stadiums themselves, we radiated out from the entrance uh, exit areas of each of the installations. These were really beautiful when you flew into Mexico City and saw the different installations from the air. Now that was the basic branding of the games for Mexico, but of course there were other parts of the games that had to be uh, attended to as far as uh, communicating and so forth. And part of one of those uh, areas is the sports events. And traditionally, the host country developed, well, up to, up to just before Mexico was Tokyo, and they did a stick figure um, kind of approach to their, um, you know, their, their sporting events. What we did, we developed icons that were more based on Mexican glyph systems um, and focused on a part of the body or a piece of equipment, or in this case, a combination of two for track and field. When water was involved, um, that became part of the icon. And here we have just a part of the human body to indicate swimming in the water. And here's an example of um, a rubbing taken from uh, Mayan glyphs, and you can see the formation that they used uh, was very helpful for us. Now, I mentioned earlier that we had to use three languages, and um, we tried to use no languages that we possibly could, and I'm talking about Spanish, French, and English, and we didn't use any languages on the signs to um, guide people to the different sporting installations. So the, the symbols work in that respect. Um, you know, and I'll mention, at this period in history, for sporting events at Olympics, symbols were um, accepted. But when you tried to use them in other areas, outside of road signs and things, but when you tried to use them in the city, they, they were thought of more for illiterate people, not, not as helpers. And uh, of course, that's, that's changed now. <laughs> We spend our lives being uh, told how to get around, both in our virtual and our real world, with, with icons. Another area that was extremely helpful, both in uh, imaging for the game's parts and for the wayfinding um, and identity of events, as far I mean, ident identity of areas in the wayfinding. Silhouettes were very important, and of course this comes from the early Greeks, and I used silhouettes, I kind of updated the silhouette and uh, developed a series of postage stamp, one for each of the 19 events, and the idea here is to take the same stamp. Uh, we didn't have much, we didn't have any uh, really way of um, um, 
getting things to register with each other on these. I had two colors to work with, so I, I just flooded the background with a color and then overprinted it with black. I dropped the Mexico 68 out of the color. And each stamp was the same, and when you place one next to the other, the idea was to have motion run through the stamps. They became um, a very important part of the, the image of the games themselves. Again, the color as well. <laughs> I, I sh I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> I, I show this because I was going down West Side Highway with my wife in uh, 2004 in a cab, and I saw a billboard, and I, 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 I thought I was deja vu. I, I, thought, I said to her, why are the stamps here? And it was actually, it was that, you know, it, was really, it really happened. I mean, it was really shocking, you know, very strong image.